start looking at the other type of discount and this is called uh, incremental quantity discount which is the discount for the amount which is exceeding the breakpoints and we saw this uh, graph here showing that uh, for the first 500 items you have to pay a fixed price if you're ordering more than 500 you will get a new price for those between 500 and 1000 and for all those items in the order exceeding 1000 you have to pay a new price which again is 28 cents now we can see that these numbers are fixed if the order is more than 1000 you have to pay 150 in total for the first 500 and 145 for the next 500 which will give a total of 295 for the first 1000 so let's now have a look at this type of, of discount it's a bit more complex to find the, uh, the optimal uh, order size here because the unit price will be dependent on the order size when we use the all unit discount we knew that if we ordered more than the breakpoint we get a new unit price which could be used directly in the formulas but now the unit price will depend on the size of the order so we need to well, do some more complex calculations so let's have a look at this example and we can use the same example in, as in the textbook with the numbers we can see here breakpoints at 500 and 1000 uh, three options for prices 30 29 and 28 cents so the cost dependent on the vari variable Q will now be 30 cents multiplied by Q which is the, the size of the order and this is if the case when the order size is less than or equal to 500 in this case we should include 500 so we get five we get a fixed price for the first 500 so if Q is less than or equal to 500 this will now be the cost one uh, 0.30 multiplied by the order size Q next option is if the order size is between 500 and 1000 if 500 is smaller than Q and Q is smaller than or equal to 1000 then the price will be 500 multiplied by 0 0.30 plus 500 or uh, the Q value minus 500 multiplied by 0 0.29 this will be the second option here if you're ordering between 500 and 1000 items you have to pay a fixed price 0 0.30 multiplied by 500 which is 150 plus 29 cents for those exceeding 500 and then the third option still the batch of the first 500 is the same and the batch of the next 500 would also be a fixed value 500 multiplied by 0 0.29 And then Q minus 1000 multiplied by 0 0.28. And this will be the case if Q is larger than 1000. So now we have these three options for the costs when you have different values of, of Q. Either you pay 30 cents for all, or you will pay uh, 30 cents for the first 529 for those exceeding 500, or you have to pay in total 225, 295 for the first 1000, and 
28 cents for those exceeding 1,000. What we now want to do is to find the unit cost, the cost per unit, because this is now the expression we need to use in the cost function. So the cost per unit will be the total cost per order, as shown here, divided by Q. This is the cost per unit. And we can, well, we can simplify this expression a bit because we know this is 150. We know that 500 multiplied by 0 0.29 is 145, which means this expression here is 150 plus minus 145. Then we have five left and we have Q multiplied by 0 0.29. So here, this will be 0 0.29 Q plus 5. If we simplify the second expression here. And we can do the same for the third expression. 150 plus 145 will give us a total of 295 minus 1000 multiplied by 0 0.28, which is 280, which means 295 minus 280 will be 15. And the variable will be Q multiplied by 0 0.28. Plus 15, like this. So these are now the three expressions we have, and if we want to find the unit price, price per unit, we will divide by Q, the number of orders in one unit. So then 0 0.30, quite simple, divide this by Q. 0 0.29 Q divided by Q, plus 5 divided by Q. And the third option, 0 0.28Q divided by Q plus 15 divided by Q. Like this. This is now the expression for the unit price in these three options when the order size can be less than 500, between 500 and 1,000, or more than 1,000. And now we can use this unit price uh, in the cost function to try to find the optimal order size when we are using an all, uh, uh, the incremental quantity discount. And as we can see here, now, the optimal will always occur at a realizable EOQ value, and you should compare the costs at all realizable EOQ values. And we can look at the figure again, here. And this is the figure for the same example. So we know that the order size of 400 is at this point, and this will give the same cost as we calculated with the all unit cost, because then we don't have a discount at all. So we found that the optimal order size is 400, and we have an optimal, uh, or, or the corresponding cost was 204. But to be sure, maybe to well, check whether this figure is correct, we also need to control against the next realizable EOQ value, which is around here. We need to find it, the exact value, and we need to calculate the cost for it. And we also need to find, even if this figure shows us that this EOQ value is not the realizable because it is outside the scope of this price, we need to identify what is it and to check whether it is out of scope. And when we can find that it is not realizable, then we can just discard that one. But at least we know by looking at the figure that we have the traditional EOQ value without a discount needs to be compared with some value here, 
which will give us a discount on, on some of the items. So, <coughs> uh, the other variables are the same. We have the same demand of 600, we have the uh, ordering uh, cost of 8, and we have the interest rate of 20%. We can just write them to be sure. So this is uh, general values for, for, the, for, for this example. Then look at the average annual cost. And we can see that G uh, of Q, the cost function, is now dependent on the ordering cost as uh, usual. The demand divided by the order size multiplied by K plus the holding cost. And the holding cost now will be the average size of the stock multiplied by the interest rate uh, or multiplied by the holding cost and the holding cost is the product of the interest rate and the unit cost and now the unit cost will be the expressions shown here the c of q divided by q and multiplied by the interest rate and similar the purchase cost needs to be included. So we have the demand multiplied by the unit cost, C of Q divided by Q. Uh, we remember that in this case, the optimal order size was 400, and we had a cost of 204. We don't need to calculate that again. But now, let's try to see what if we use this expression for the unit cost? Then we will find the, what we can call the G of 1, the first discount option, will be the ordering cost is the same, 600 divided by Q, because now we don't know exactly the value of Q, this is what we want to find, multiplied by 8, plus 1 half Q, multiplied by 0 0.29 plus 5 divided by Q, and multiplied by 20%. <coughs> and at last, the demand of 600 multiplied by 0 0.29 plus 5 divided by Q. So now we have this expression for the cost function for the first discount option here when you're ordering between 500 and 1000 items. So let's now try to simplify this expression a bit. Then we can see that here this will be 4800 divided by Q plus uh, Q divided by 2 multiplied by 0 0.29 multiplied by 20 uh, or 0 0.20 uh, this will give us a total of 0 0.029 multiplied by Q zero point twenty nine divided by 2 and multiplied by 20 percent 0 0.029 multiplied by Q. And Q divided by 2 multiplied by 5 divided by Q multiplied by 0 0.20. Well, we just shorten the Qs and are left with 0 0.5. And here 600 multiplied by 0 0.29 is 174. 
600 multiplied by 5 divided by Q is 3000. And this will give us a total of 4,800 plus 3,000 divided by Q. Plus 0 0.029 multiplied by Q. Plus 174. And this is now the expression for the cost function for this option of our discount. Well, then we can see what can we do about this. We still haven't identified the optimal Q and we haven't found the cost. But uh, if we remember when we presented the EOQ formula, we found that formula by deriving the cost function. And then we derived the cost function with uh, respect to the setup cost and the holding cost. And we knew that the purchase cost was a constant. So when deriving, it just disappeared. But now, by deriving this cost function, we can find an expression for the derived function and set that one to zero. So let's try to do that. The G derived of Q will now be deriving this part, 7,800 divided by Q. Then we are left with minus 7,800 divided by the square of Q. This is by deriving the first factor here. In, in this expression. And then deriving 0.029q, well, then we are left with 0.029. And deriving a constant will return 0. So now we have the, this, uh, the derived function here. And we remember, by setting a derived function equal to 0, because the derived function is a expression for the gradient of the function and when the gradient is equal to zero we know that we have an optimal point either a maximum point or in this case a minimum point where we have the minimum uh, the minimum coin uh, the minimum cost here so putting this expression equal to zero we can find that the optimal q will be equal to the square root of 7,800 divided by 0 0.029. Solving this expression equal to 0 and uh, find the expression for the optimal Q. And this will give us a value of 519 and 519 will be this point here the minimum point of this curve and 519 is within the scope of that price because 519 then you have to pay 30 cents for the first 500 and 29 cents for the remaining 19 items so this is a potential optimal solution in this case here, 519. And then we need to find what is the cost when uh, the total cost when we are ordering 519 items. And then, of course, look at the cost function. Cost function, well, we can use the first one, but we can use the, this one because this is only a simplification of this one. So, 7,800 divided by 519 plus 0 0.029 multiplied by 519 plus 174.50. G of 519 will give us a total value 
of 204.58, which is not very different from 204, which we remember was the optimal value by using the order size of 400 without a discount. 204, and this case will give us a solution which is, well, slightly above. But still, it's, it's not as good as the previous one. So in this case, it seems to be better that ordering 400 without a discount than trying to get the discount and trying to calculate the optimal value of the or optimal size of, of the order when you will receive a discount. But still, we have one more option here. We have the third option. 0 0.28 plus 15 divided by Q will now be the unit or the expression for the unit price. And let's uh, use this color, green, because most of the function will be the same. Uh, the setup cost is 600 multiplied by 8. Q is still the variable. Q divided by 2 and 0 0.20 is still the same, but the difference will now be the unit cost here. 0 0.28 multiplied by 15 divided by Q and similar in the purchase cost expression here 0 0.28 plus uh, plus of course 15 divided by Q like this and then we get some different numbers uh, set of cost or ordering cost, still the same. Here, we will get uh, uh, 0 0.029 Q, or uh, we'll get 0 0.028 Q, of course. Q divided by 2 multiplied by 0 0.28 multiplied by 0 0.2 plus Q divided by 2 multiplied by 15 divided by Q multiplied by 0 0.20 will give us 1.5 and here 600 multiplied by 0 0.28 will be uh, uh, it will be 168 and 600 multiplied by 15 divided by Q will be 9000 divided by Q okay then we need to simplify this and we get 4,800 plus 9,000 is 13,000 divided by Q. 0 0.028 Q and 169.5. And then we have the simplified expression for the cost function for the third alternative here with this unit price and again try to derive with respect to Q and then we are left with minus 13,000 divide, uh, divided by the square of Q plus 0 0.028. which now is the derived function. The constant will disappear when deriving. And this gives us an optimal Q as the square root of 13,000 divided by 0 0.028. This value is uh, 
702. 702 is uh, here, which is outside the scope of this price. This means you cannot buy at, at this cost function, you cannot buy the optimal order size with this cost function because you will not get the price. The price will only be for, or the new price will only be for the number of items exceeding 1000. So here you will not get the price at all, you have to pay the fixed cost for the first uh, batches of, uh, uh, of the order and you will not be, uh, be able to utilize the discount in this case. So we don't have or we shouldn't at, uh, at all try to find the costs here because 702 is outside the scope of that price. Now, in this case, we have only two options. One is to order 400 without a discount. Another is to order 519 and get a discount for 19, which is exceeding 500. The third option is not a potential optimal value. Okay, then we have presented, question? Uh, yeah, sure, you're right, thank you. It should be 13,800, 9,000 plus 4,800, thank you. And then it should be correct, but I think this, because I, well, calculated this before the lecture, so I think the answer of 702 should be uh, the correct answer anyway. Uh, but, uh, well, anyway, it will be outside the scope, so this is not a potential optimal order size. <coughs> so, as a summary on this incremental discount, first find the expression for the unit cost, like this, and then use this uh, expression in the cost function, like this, you have to exchange the C value from the, uh, the cost function with the expression from the unit cost. And the C value is both in the purchase cost and in the holding cost. And then try to compare the values for the average annual cost for all the really stable EOQs. We need to find the optimal order size by uh, simplifying and find a new expression for the uh, for the cost function, derive the cost function and so solve it with respect to Q. And if that Q value is within the scope of that price, we also need to find the cost of the, that particular policy, which we saw in the first example. Then we had a value of 519, which was put into the cost function and compared to the cost of using a policy without a discount. Uh, okay, I have uh, one short topic left, which I should also present in this lecture. I have some examples, uh, at least one example on the all unit cost, which I will upload in, in Fronter after the lecture. But uh, if we look at this, Uh, at these uh, slides here, we also have this last part of, of chapter four before we start on the chapter five about the stochastic inventory theory. And this uh, is about resource constraint multi-product system. If you have several products, uh, but you have uh, constraints in, in resources, for example, the space available or the money amount available in this example here, the total amount available to spend is given here as C, so in you, you are not allowed by the management of the company or for some other reason to use more money in, and invest in, uh, in inventory. So then we have some constraints here, which tells us that the value multiplied by Q for each of the items should not exceed this capital C, which is the upper limit you are allowed to use. And then you have the condition here, 
that the C1 divided uh, the C divided by the holding cost is met. This means also that you have the same uh, same interest rate because the C you know that the the H is the product of C multiplied by the interest rate. This means that all the products use the same internal interest rate, which is quite uh, quite common. So let's now try to look at one short example on this. We have uh, also taken from the textbook here, example on page 227. You have a small factory producing three different products and you're given a maximum of $30,000 which should be invested in inventory. So let's now try to make a small table of this. We have the item one, two, and three. And you have the demand for all these items, which is given as 1,850, 1,150, and 800. Uh, we are given the variable cost for each item, the C, which is for item 1, 50, for item 2, 350, and for item 3, 85. And we have a set of costs for ordering. These are orders are independent of each other. So we have the K values given as 100, 150 and 50. This is the cost of placing orders for all these three items, which has different demand and different unit value. So, and in addition, we have the interest rate given as 25%. which uh, corresponds to this condition that the interest rate should be the same. The value divided by the total holding cost will be the same, means that the interest rate is the same. So let's now try to find the Q value. Q1, well, the Q, Qs use the EOQ formula. Q1 will be equal to 172. We don't go through the details here. They should be pretty easy to find. Use the EOQ formula with all the variable values you have here. The Q2 with these values will give us an optimal order size of 63. And the Q3 with these values will give us an optimal order size of 61. So let's now try to find out what is the total inventory cost in this case. Or the maximum inventory cost. Well, if you are ordering at the same time, which might happen, well, which would be the, uh, the, the worst case situation, you will have a total of 172 items at a cost of 50. And you will have a total of 63 items at a cost of 350. And you have a total of 61 items at a cost of 85. And this will give us a total amount of 35,835. Which is now the maximum amount of money invested in inventory. But in this case, we have a constraint that says that we should not at any point have more than 30,000 invested in inventory. So the 
capital C value is 30,000. In this case, the amount of money invested in inventory should be less than or equal to the capital C, which is 30,000. And then 30,000 divided by 35,835 will now be the fraction we should try to reduce the order size to meet this particular condition. So here, find the fraction. divided by 35835. This gives us a fraction of 0 0.8372. And then we need to reduce these values by this fraction here. So we can now try to multiply all these numbers by 172 multiplied by 0 0.8372. And we get the optimal order sizes with this particular condition to be 144. Uh, 52 and 51. And now we can try again to find the total inventory cost here. 144 multiplied by 50 plus 52 multiplied by 350 plus 51 multiplied by 85 and we get the value of 29,735. which is smaller than 30,000. So this is now a valid or a feasible policy with this constraint. But still, we can see that we have here $265, which is not utilized. So we can actually analyze it a bit further and see that, okay, we can add a few more of item number one and item number three to get exactly 30,000, if we want to adjust that one. But anyway, this way to find the fraction is the, is the, the, the common way to reduce the order sizes when you have this constraint about, uh, um, about the maximum amount of money invested. What is mentioned here is uh, at, at the, the bottom here, the solution is straightforward, but if the condition is not met, one must use an iterative procedure involving Lagrange multiplier. I will not go into this. That would be to if we could just find, well, we, we can find the optimal policy of uh, increasing item number one and three here. And also, if you have a condition which is not on money, like in this case, but it could be on space, you have limited storage space, then the problem will be more complex because the items, in addition to have a different costs and different demand and, uh, uh, and uh, ordering cost, of course, but uh, in addition to these differences, they will also have a different space, different size. And then a product which is expensive might not use much uh, space on stock and a cheap product might use more space on stock. So it is not obvious that you should reduce the order size in the same way as you did with a capital restriction when you have space restriction. But this, you should be aware of this, but this is not a part of the curriculum in this course. Okay, then I think we are finished with this part. As mentioned, uh, assignment number three, you have problems on problem one and two regarding deterministic inventory theory. And uh, next week I will start on stochastic or uncertain inventory theory, which is necessary to solve problem number three.